Hey everybody, this is a quick tutorial on how to use SimReady assets. When you go into a SimReady folder, you're going to see numerous files. Uh, we're going to focus on the withphysics.usd file. The withphysics.usd file is everything needed to simulate this asset with rigid bodies. Um, the file is only the physics attributes referencing the inst file. So I started this scene just by doing new from stage template and bringing in the abandoned parking lot. Um, and then I also added a physics scene. Uh, this is very important because based on what unit you're working in, and right now we're going to work in one meter is one unit, um, and that's how all SimReady assets are going to be processed. So our gravity is going to actually be 9.8. Um, now I'm going to drag in my withphysics.usd. You'll see here it comes in right to the center. Okay. When you look at this, we have a payload and we're instancing or referencing, sorry, the inst file and we have a physics material. When I put this anywhere and press the play button, now we get physics. We can also hit shift and drag these around. Okay, if I want to stop, go back to beginning. Maybe I want to duplicate this one. Okay, is that something for it to hit? Okay, maybe we also rotate this one okay and press play and now we got these guys stacking pretty nicely and if i want to play with them they're working pretty well so the SimReady assets are going to come already pre-canned with any of this stuff let's get into a little bit about how the asset is organized so like i said before we have a payload and then we have a reference to the model and then inside there, we're going to have one main transform always. Okay, and underneath there, we'll have our meshes. Now, these meshes can either be just for render or can also be collision meshes. So all of our rigid body per properties are going to be on this main transform. And when we look in the property editor, we should see rigid body. And then here you can disable or enable it. You can also check this if you want to keyframe it. Okay. And if you want to add some linear velocity, this is initial linear velocity and initial angular velocity, you can do it from here. Usually, you're not going to mess with a whole lot in this area. We want to keep our masses and densities and everything to auto compute because it's going to take into account the physics material. Now, each mesh is actually going to have the collision, the collider uh, properties. You can see here if I want collision or not. Now, right now, we're actually not seeing what we're colliding against. So if you want to see how this object, what the collision object is for this, you're going to go to this eyeball here. You're going to show type. Down in physics, you can see colliders. And we're going to show all. Okay. Now you can see we got this pink wireframe. This pink wireframe is actually what the object is colliding on. And we want to make these as efficient as possible. So we get some options down in the collider. Now, usually a um, SimReady asset is going to already have this stuff set up. But if you wanted to come in here and make something even more efficient, you could go to Approximation right here and click on the different options. If I wanted to be a little bit more um, efficient, I could go to Convex Hull. But as you can see, when I change it to Convex Hull here, we're losing the concavity of this object and we're no longer, we're getting a line straight across. So that's not going to work for this asset, especially if we wanted to throw something in the bucket. Um, there's also bounding spheres and bounding cubes, which again, probably won't work with this asset. But maybe you have some boxes uh, and you want to be even more efficient. I usually always use convex decomposition because uh, it gives you the best result in the most efficient manner. If I want to add more detail to this asset, I can come down here and do max convex hulls. Also in the advanced tab, you can do the shrink wrap and the shrink wrap will try to match the wireframe directly, all the points directly to the asset. So that works pretty well too. All right. Now, each asset will also come with a physics material. So on these collision meshes, we're going to apply a physics material right here. So you see physics materials on selected model, um, and then you can see which one it is. And this one, in this case, is plastic. Okay, and this is referencing a bunch of presets that we've we have in the pack. So when we go into this physics material, this is actually going to determine a lot about your collision response. Okay, and a lot of your time is going to be spent in here simulation-wise, uh, messing with these. We tried to get you in the right space, 
but if you you know want something to be a little bouncier have more friction this is where you would do it also i want to note if you scale these objects and work in a different units you're going to have to scale this density attribute because this is determining your masses and when we're working with the rigid bodies obviously your masses are super important right so again any of these folders we should have a physics asset and here drag this in and these should already pre can and look at some other tutorials for some of the other things that come with SimReady assets like semantic labeling. Thank you for watching.